Welcome everyone to our lab on moles and mass in chemical reactions. So this is going to be our introduction to what is called stoichiometry, which is just using ratios of moles in chemical reactions. And this follows our lessons on how to balance chemical equations and how to calculate the number of moles from a certain mass of chemicals. Today what we're going to do is we're going to apply all of that information that we've gained over the past two weeks into a practical um, well, chemical reactions. So we're going to do a uh, chemical reaction and this is um, the reaction that we're going to do here. So we're going to um, put some sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, with some hydrogen chloride, so this is hydrochloric acid. And we will produce some carbon dioxide, some water, and some sodium chloride. So our goals for this experiment, in addition to witnessing or identifying the four signs, or as many of the four signs of a uh, chemical reaction as we can, we will um, calculate the number of moles of sodium bicarbonate the sodium hydrogen carbonate that goes into the chemical reaction and from that amount we will find the number of moles and then we will measure the mass of the sodium chloride that is produced by the chemical reaction and from that we will calculate the number of moles of sodium chloride produced and this is an attempt to reproduce the ratio of moles from the chemical reaction written down on paper to an actual yield, an actual amount that is produced in a chemical reaction. All right, well, let's get to it. So what I would like you to do is to follow with me on the procedure um, in the lab experiment that you have and how we begin this is by weighing a clean and dry Erlenmeyer flask. So this is our Erlenmeyer flask and we need the masks of this flask because at the end of the chemical reaction the uh, sodium chloride will be in the flask and it will not be possible for us to get it all out uh, to calculate the mass of the sodium chloride. So what we'll do is we'll just subtract the mass of the container that the sodium chloride is in, which is this Erlenmeyer flask. So the weight of the flask is 85.48 grams. So we will note that in our data table, 85.48. Next reactant is the um, sodium bicarbonate. So the sodium bicarbonate is a powder, so we'll need a little cup to measure it in. And we will zero out the mass of the cup so that we only are calculating um, or measuring the mass of the powder uh, that we put into the cup. Here we have to add um, between 2.5 and 3 grams of the sodium bicarbonate. So between 2.5 and 3 grams. Well, here we are at 2.99 grams. So 2.99 grams of sodium bicarbonate. And we're gonna record that amount in our data table as well. And then we're ready to proceed uh, to the next step. So what we are going to do is we're going to take the sodium bicarbonate and we are going to um, put it into our Erlenmeyer flask and making sure that we don't spill any. And so all of the sodium bicarbonate goes into the flask. And 
now we're ready to um, perform the chemical reaction. So I have pre-measured um, 15 milliliters of dilute hydrochloric acid into a graduated cylinder. And so what I will do is I will slowly add the acid into uh, the flask about one milliliter at a time. So hopefully you can um, identify some signs of chemical reactions. Well, that wasn't quite one milliliter at a time, but it was slowly enough that we did not lose any of the chemicals during the reaction. So now we wait, swirling lightly, um, for the entire reaction to be over. Once the reaction is over, well, this is what's left. So we have a clear liquid and there are no longer any sign of any chemical reaction happening in here. So the reaction seems to be complete. Now that our chemical reaction is, um, is over, it is time to go to step five of um, our procedure. And what we need to do at this point is to get rid of the water. Now, if you, now is a good time to go back to um, your background information on the lab and look at the chemical reaction that we did today. If you look at the three products, while the reaction was going on, uh, you could see one of the three. And now, <clears throat> which has escaped, we're now left with the other two. Now, the goal of the experiment is to calculate or to measure uh, the amount of sodium chloride that is produced in the reaction. So what we have to do is to get rid of the second of the three products, which is the water. So the carbon dioxide is gone, escaped during the reaction, we could see that. And now we have the water and the sodium chloride left. So we will simply boil away the water, which should leave us with the sodium chloride. So the evaporation of the water has begun. We can see uh, the water escaping. And we're gonna continue this slow boil um, until the flask is completely dry and all of the water has escaped. So we need to do this um, at a gentle boil so that we don't lose any of um, the sodium chloride the product that we want to measure. So, and this is the reason why we're doing this um, experiment in an Erlenmeyer flask and not a beaker. Uh, at this point with a beaker, we would be losing uh, too much due to bubbling over uh, the water, escaping over the edge um, of the beaker. So we'll let this go for a couple minutes. Well, the evaporation is almost complete. Uh, we're at the popcorn stage right now. <laughs> and we will continue the evaporation until no more steam comes out of the Erlenmeyer flask. When the steam um, stops coming out completely, then we know that we have gotten rid of all of the water. Now that the steam has completely stopped, uh, we will turn off the hot plate and set the Erlenmeyer to cool. 
and then we will be ready to take the final mass. Now we can look at the Erlmeyer flask and feel quite confident that the water is completely left. There is no sign of moisture anywhere on the Erlmeyer. So we can take the measurement of the Erlmeyer flask and the sodium chloride that is left in it. And we have a value of 87.41 grams, 87.41 grams. And now you can see um, <clears throat> that it was quite useful to find the mass of the Erlmeyer at the beginning uh, before we started this reaction because there would be no way now to measure the mass of the sodium chloride produced any other way. And now we have all of the information that we need to complete the calculation and to determine the number of moles of sodium bicarbonate, the number of moles of sodium bicarbonate that went into the reaction. And we can calculate that because we know that we started with 2.99 grams of the sodium bicarbonate. So we can find the molar mass of the sodium bicarbonate and calculate the number of moles that we used. Then our objective was to calculate the number of moles of sodium chloride that would be produced. So the number of moles of sodium chloride, to calculate this, we need the mass of the sodium chloride and its molar mass. The molar mass, of course, we find from the periodic table. The mass of the sodium chloride that we obtained in the experiment, we don't exactly know it by itself, but we do know that the flask with the sodium chloride weighed 87.41 grams. If you recall, at the beginning of the experiment, we measured the flask by itself, and that was 85.48 grams. So knowing that, it is easy to calculate the mass of just the sodium chloride in the flask. This will be the mass of your sodium chloride, and again you use the molar mass of sodium chloride from the periodic table, and you can calculate the number of moles. After balancing this equation, the coefficients that go in front of the sodium bicarbonate and the sodium chloride, these coefficients, these numbers, will give you what the intended or the supposed mole ratio is for every this many moles of sodium bicarbonate you should get this many moles of sodium chloride and so your job is to now verify this ratio and see how close we came to that number